In today's video, we go many many years back in history to Prophet Haile Selassie. He is a man who is considered by his supporters as a great leader and modernizer. The Ethiopian was one of the first African leaders to become a figure on the global stage. He is also seen as a messiah figure for the Rastafarian religion, a religion that was named after him. This was because of a prophecy made by Jamaican activist Marcus Gavey. Haile Selassie was the last emperor of Ethiopia which was never colonized and served as a symbol of African independence throughout the colonial period. In this video, we take a look at the life and legacy of Haile Selassie, the last emperor of Ethiopia and a man seen by some as God reincarnated. If you are new to this channel, don't be shy to press the subscription button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new uploads that come out on Mondays and Fridays. Haile Selassie was born in a mud hut in Ejesa Gora in the Hara province of Ethiopia. He was born on the 23rd of July 1892. Originally named Lish Tafari Makonen, he was the only surviving and legitimate son of Ras Makonen, the governor of Hara. Please note that I will be switching between the names Haile Selassie and Tafari in this video. So Haile Selassie traced his lineage back to Emperor Menelik I who was credited with being a child of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. He was raised a Christian and educated by private European tutors. Among his father's important allies was his cousin, Emperor Menelik II, who did not have a male heir to succeed him. Tafari seemed like a possible candidate when, following his father's death in 1906, he was taken under the wing of Menelik II. However, when Menelik died in 1913, his grandson Li Jiasu succeeded him to the throne, but because he was unreliable and his close association with Islam, this made him unpopular with the majority Christian population of Ethiopia. Tafari then became a rallying point of the Christian resistance and deposed Li Jiasu in 1916. Menelik II's daughter, Zuditu, thereupon became the empress in 1917 and Ras Tafari was named regent and heir apparent to the throne. Tafari was highly progressive and became a symbol for the hopes and dreams of Ethiopia's younger population. As regent, Ras Tafari Makonen began the transformation of Ethiopia. He ended slavery in 1923 and established a school for the newly freed slaves in the capital, Addis Ababa. It was also in 1923 when he led Ethiopia into the League of Nations. The following year, he traveled to Europe, becoming the first Ethiopian ruler to go abroad. His power and influence grew more and more. In 1928, he appointed himself the king. Rastafari Makonen became emperor outright in 1930 upon the death of Empress Zuditu. Upon assuming the throne, he took the name Haile Selassie, which means the might of the Trinity. He continued the modernization of the state of Ethiopia and in 1931, he established the first Ethiopian constitution which centralized government power under his leadership. He also focused his attention on increasing public health services, providing electricity and creating a modern telephone network. In 1931, he also founded the Bank of Ethiopia which introduced the Ethiopian currency. In 1935, his efforts were cut short when Benito Mussolini's Italy invaded Ethiopia. Haile Selassie resisted the invaders but he was forced into exile in May of 1936. He appealed for help from the League of Nations in a memorable speech that he delivered to that body in Geneva on June 30, 1936. With the beginning of World War II, he secured British assistance in forming an army of Ethiopian exiles in the Sudan. British and Ethiopian forces invaded Ethiopia in January of 1941 and recaptured Addis Ababa several months later. He was reinstated as the emperor. He dedicated himself to rebuild his administration and improving Ethiopia's defense. Progressively, many youngsters were sent abroad to study and learn what they could from other cultures. He improved the infrastructure of the country and backed by the Western powers, he managed to build bridges, hospitals, factories and schools. He was viewed as a reformer by many. Not all was rosy in Ethiopia. It is said that he suppressed political parties and opposition. Ethiopian peasants were starved while he was living a lavish lifestyle. Haile Selassie was also accused of breeding corruption and the creation of a system in which millions of his subjects lived in poverty and oppression. Media was censored and controlled by the emperor. Many critics will also point out to his annexation of neighboring Eritrea in 1962 as one of the low points of his rule. Selassie devoted resources to controlling Eritrea which came under Ethiopian rule after World War II. His military rule of that region led to an independence campaign that triumphed finally on May the 24th, 1993. This is one of the reasons why Eritreans and Ethiopians don't see eye to eye. 
When he was crowned the emperor, Selassie assumed the titles of King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and the Conquering Lion of the tribe of Judah, to some fulfilling the biblical prophecy of a black king that had been emphasized by Jamaican black rights campaigner Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey had told his followers in 1920 that they should look to Africa when a black king shall be crowned for the day of the deliverance is at hand. So when a black man called Rastafari was crowned in Ethiopia, many saw that as a sign that the prophecy had come true. By the mid-1930s, the Ethiopian emperor was regarded by followers as the living embodiment of God. These are some of the origins of the Rastafari religion. The Rastafaris found common ground through their belief in a lineage that dated back to ancient Israelites, black superiority and the repatriation of the diaspora from the oppressive land of Babylon to Africa. Their movement reflected a range of influences including Old Testament instructions on avoiding certain foods and a local belief in the spiritual powers of marijuana. On a visit to Jamaica in 1966, the Emperor Haile Selassie was greeted by thousands desperate to get a glimpse of their god. Among the devotees was the wife of reggae musician Bob Marley. Bob Marley at the time was away in the United States. Rita Marley, Bob Marley's wife, would later describe that he saw nail marks on Haile Selassie's palm as he waved at her. It was a moment of religious awakening for her and when her husband returned, they embraced the religion. Inspired by Marcus Garvey and believing in Ethiopia as the one true Zion, during the 1950s and 1960s, some 2,500 people from the Caribbean and African Americans went to live in the vicinity of Addis Ababa in what is now known as the Sheshamani village. This was a village dedicated to the Rastafarians. Haile Selassie helped establish the Organization of African Unity, which is now the African Union. Its first meeting, held in May of 1963, was held in Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia. Ethiopia, which had never been colonized, served as a symbol of African independence throughout the colonial period. Now other countries were finally gaining independence, and this was a chance to bring nations together to fight against colonization and white minority rule, while also coordinating efforts to raise living standards and defend their sovereignty. In 2019, a statue of Haile Selassie was unveiled outside the African Union's headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. This was a tribute to one of the founding fathers of this organization. By the 1970s, the situation in Ethiopia had worsened, with unemployment increasing. Also, the government's inability to respond to the country's problem undermined Selassie's rule. He lost control over his army as many left over low pay. A secessionist guerrilla war in Eritrea furthered his problems. This weakened his defense and as a result, he was ousted from power in a coup. He was kept under house arrest until his death in 1975. The cause of his death was disputed. Reports claimed that he had died of a natural cause, but another one revealed that he had probably been strangled to death on governmental orders. His remains were discovered in 1992, buried under a toilet in the Imperial Palace. He received a proper burial in November of 2000 in Addis Ababa's Trinity Cathedral. Many people will remember Haile Selassie as a great statesman who made a monumental contribution to the beginning of the modernization of Ethiopia, the liberation of Africa, and the establishment of the Organization of African Unity. The followers of the Rastafarian religion will forever see him as a reincarnation of the Messiah. While his critics say he was a tyrant who suppressed the rights of his people. But one thing for sure, Haile Selassie left an indelible mark on the continent and around the world. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the life and legacy of Haile Selassie, the last emperor of Ethiopia. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.